Hi, it's Lee at SoCo. I am going to do a jumpsuit sew along for you guys today. Um, I made mine from a kind of a pretty thin woven cotton. This jumpsuit has pockets, nice roll up sleeves, um, buttons down the front. I actually did snaps on mine, so I'll show you how to set those as well, which is a setter that you can get at any fabric store. Um, what else? I used a single needle, industrial single needle for my straight stitch and a serger for all my um, edge finishing. So yeah, I'm gonna get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is lay out our tools, it's scissors, a ruler, marking pencil, snips always, and some snaps that I'm gonna set for you later, along with a setter, which I'm not showing you here. This fabric did have a backside, which was that more of that grid. And so I ended up using that, you know, I mean, fabrics, you kind of have choices as to what the front and the backside is. However, there are some heavy floats in there, which means that floating thread, which could cause problems down the road, catching on things, but I really liked it. Here's all our pieces laid out. That's two fronts, two backs, all the plackets, uh, the neckband, the collars, and the four pockets. The first thing I'm gonna do is interface everything. And so here I'm doing the back facing. Um, next, I kind of like to lay up everything in a sheet, just on a sheet of interfacing. I don't like to fuss with interfacing too much, so this is the way I do it. Definitely use a pressing cloth because the glue will get on your iron if you don't. You'll see it's kind of sticking to that. And then I trim it afterwards. Um, for me, it's just less fiddly, so I don't mind trimming uh, once it has a little more stability. Um, this is just the way that I like to do it, so I thought I'd show you that. we're going to lay up our shoulder seams this is what we're going to sew on the um, sewing machine first so this is just right across the top here you're doing right sides together and um, I'll sit down with a single needle and sew that up So while I'm here at this machine, I'm going to go ahead and sew that long center back seam as well. You know, we're going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance again. And towards the bottom of this thing, we're going to get the curve there at the crotch. So just be careful to line that up. You know, again, you're probably seeing me not use pins here. If you've watched any of my other videos, I tend to not pin a lot um, just in certain places. So if you need to pin, feel free to do that. Um, you just won't see, you know, that many on these big long seams for me. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and clean finish all those seams. You know, you could bind this. You could do a couple of different versions. We have a cool little short video for that if you check it out on my YouTube page. But um, for different seam finishes, I'm just using the, you know, the three thread overlock machine that we have um, at SoCo to do a quick little edge finishing here. So I finished all those three seams I just did. Unfortunately, we lost some footage of the jumpsuit filming, so I'm going to show some of these things on this jumpsuit that I made for Tarleton. So, same exact steps. Um, this is me here. I'm doing a stay stitch around this neckline before we start putting on the collar and facings and things. So, I just did that because I'm actually using this stretch, um, a stretch woven, and so I'm going to take a little more care with things because it can't get stretched out as you sew it. So, um, yeah. So, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of pin the collar on here just to get it started for you you're going to start at the notches there's there's notches there on your collar piece as, as well as notches on your body um, so make sure you start at the notches and then i'm going to go ahead and lay up the facings as well here while i'm there i'm going to just stitch here at the shoulder seams on these you can see a little bit closer here these are the my notches that I was talking about so we're going to make sure those are matched up um, that's going to help us get a really nice point when we turn that collar you know when we're finishing up that notch collar so um, yeah you'll start there and then you will just stitch all the way around the neck matching the notches and the shoulder seams and finishing again at that notch um, so you're not going all the way off the collar piece you're just stop at the notch
here's this little single needle stitch that I'm going to do here on my shoulder seam and my facing. Um, if you like the way I Frankenstein my interface, I like to use everything that I can on my interfacing. So yeah, that's what's happening there on my interfacing. Um, and then just kind of press those things open. You don't need to clean finish those or anything because they're going to be totally hidden once you get it all sewn together. Um, so I just give them a little press open and then I'll take it over to the serger and clean finish, you know, that outside edge, the edge that's not going to get attached to um, the body. So now you're going to do the same thing to the facings that you did around the body and the collar. So you attach the collar to the facing starting and stopping at those notches um, and then also matching up all the other notches as you go around. Gonna press all these facings and seams so I press them open and then I'm gonna press everything towards the top of the collar on both the facing and collar piece and then the body and collar piece so you press open just to get a nice um, nice finish there and then you're gonna press it all towards the top of the collar so at this point we are gonna attach the collar piece um, the, the facing sorry the facing to the body of the garment. So we're gonna go and match up all this collar. There's some notches there. You match up your points um, as you go around. And then also down the front of the jumpsuit, you're gonna match all your notches so you can make sure that nothing gets stretched out as you do this sewing. So as you start sewing this, you are going to start at the knot. So don't go all the way to the end of this facing because you're going to clean finish this here um, a little bit later. So start at that notch. You've got your 3 8 inch seam allowance and you're going to stitch all the way around um, your neckline here. You're going to pivot, you know, at this corner points, making a really nice point here. You know, it's really important on these kind of collars. You really see this. It's right by your face. and. You know if they're lumpy or misshapen you really do see it so make nice pivots you're gonna sew to this notch here and then you're gonna again leave your needle down and you're gonna pivot right at that notch and you're just gonna kind of sew over all of those things you know sometimes if you have a lot of bulk um, if, if your jumpsuit sorry if your jumpsuit fabric is a little bulkier you might need to um, trim out some of those things and even press them open sometimes but this was okay both of them going up towards the collar for me um, and I'm going to show you in just a second how I snip all of those points out. Now we're going to clip all these corners and so you want to just trim off as much as you need to um, on these points and sometimes I even come back and trim more so just make sure you clear everything out okay so this snip is happening all the way down to that point on both sides of your fabric so you completely clear out a little bee snip there in that corner to get a nice point um, and then I use my bone folder here on my corners to get that pushed out nicely so you can kind of see what that looks like after that, we're going to go press it at the pressing table and, you know, I kind of open it up, try to open up some of those seams as much as I can on that collar edge um, while it's inside out. And then I push all my corners out again and make sure they're nice and sharp. And then I press that edge of that collar and that facing all the way down so it's really nice and crisp down that front side.
now we're going to attach the crotch seam here in the front. So I'm just showing you here, I'm going to match those up, the small little piece. Um, and then we can get that placket kind of um, finished at the end there as well. So I am pinning this because again, this is like a stretch woven. So I just wanted to make sure that everything was matching up here at this point. So there is a point there. So that's where you start your sewing at that dot that was on your pattern. So if you didn't transfer that dot, make sure you have it. finish all of these facings together the placket we actually have to snip right there to that point so we snip at a diagonal up to that dot and that allows us as you can see here to put these two ends together and then we can do a clean finish on those so the first thing I'll do is to actually stitch them um, on the single needle and then in just a minute you'll see me go over to the serge and do the other side After we've done that, then we can go ahead and clean finish um, that curved crotch seam. And I do think here I forgot to snip this side. Um, so as I get down here towards the bottom, I realize I need to clip that to be able to get, yeah, exactly right there, to be able to get that to separate from the end piece. So that's what that little snip is right there so that I can um, pull that other the other seam allowances to the side and just clean finish this by itself. So now you can see there what that looks like a little easier. So you've got this really nice front now um, and everything is kind of clean finished inside there and that's where you've stopped sewing. And so what we're going to do next is kind of get this ready for top stitching. So I'm going to put a few pins here to help me um, kind of guide my way. You can put more here on this curved section of your facing is the trickiest part. So I put some pins on the shoulders um, for sure and then a few more you know down the front facing as well just to keep them kind of nice and flat help me as i'm sewing this bit um again i'm working with this stretchy fabric so i kind of went slow around here because i didn't want it to pucker and pull which can happen in this kind of fabric so um, as we top stitch it, we're just going to be really careful here to keep a nice straight line. You know, you really, you do see the stitching on the outside of the garment, so you want to keep it as tidy as possible. You know, I'm actually going to use my serge, you know, edge as kind of a guide as far as you can see, I'm sitting on the serge and hopefully that'll help give me a really nice straight line to kind of go from. So, um, and there you kind of go around the corners, you know, around the curved parts. And there is some, you know, there's some fiddly bits actually, and I probably should have used more pins here actually. I think as I was sewing, I was like, maybe this is the place for pins. So I'm just going to work my way around this complete facing all the way down to, you know, the bottom side. And then you will see I flip it to the front to get my final stitch across the bottom just so I can do that from the front and make sure it's really nice and straight. So as you get down to this point, you know, you got a lot of fabric and what I do is I just kind of pull it towards me, you know, all of that seam allowance and just go all the way to where that seam allowance, you know, where that seam is, go all the way down to that point. And then once you flipped it outside, then you're going to do your top stitching from the outside and you can just do one straight stitch across. You could do some kind of decorative stitching. I ended up doing two stitches. So it's kind of a narrow little box that I made down at the bottom of my pocket.
last thing I'll do on this collar is give it a nice press to kind of settle in, you know, the way I want it to fold. And, you know, you could put this on and just make sure it's creasing, you know, going in the right place where you want it to stop. We did mark your buttons here, but you can always adjust that, you know, kind of where this falls. But um, here we just give it a little light press. And then as well on the inside, on the interior, the, the facing needs a little press here as well. So I went ahead and did that. Um, and we're about to jump to pocket, so we're going to go back to our, uh, our pink jumpsuit now. And we are going to clean finish all of these pocket edges by themselves. So before you sew anything, um, that's the next thing that we do here. Get all four pieces clean finished. Before we start doing the side seams of pockets, I just give them a nice little press again with the surgery just to make sure it's not ruffling or anything like that. Um, and then I will go ahead and just give a quick press to the front of the jumpsuit as well, even kind of setting my collar in place. I had pinned it where I knew I wanted my front button close to where I wanted my front button to be. So um, at this point, we're going to start. I do use pins here because there's some notches that you're matching here for that pocket opening, and I want to make sure I don't lose those. So um, I do pin in place for those. Uh, again, what I'm doing here on the side seam is just checking my pattern matching, checking to make sure everything's gonna be good there, the pockets are in the right. So next we're gonna just stitch on these pockets. You're just gonna go all the way down um, each one of these. So you'll be doing this, you know, four times. You're doing them all separately. you've got your pocket sewn on then you're going to clean finish all of your side seams uh, sorry not your seams but just your edges you haven't sewn the seams together yet but so you're going to go ahead and clean finish these all separately so you'll do you know all four of those side seams then we'll give a press on these pockets uh, we want to press them open flat in the sewing I did lose my notches so I'm actually redrawing those back in just so I can know where to do the stitching here we're gonna do a stitching alongside your seam allowance there to keep it all going the direction we want it to for your pocket bag and you are stitching between the notches here um, so I just redrew those in so I could see where I was starting and stopping so the next thing we're gonna do is this big long finally the seam uh, down your side seams I'm gonna take some time here. I do have some pins, um, again, because I'm pattern ma matching, especially. Um, you know, take your time when you're trying to match seams, especially down these front, center, backs, and side seams that you really see a mismatched pattern. And if you don't care about that, then that's fine. Um, so at this point, as we get towards this notch here, you know, that notch that you drew, uh, we are gonna go to that notch and we're gonna stitch to the left side um, of all that seam allowances. And you wanna make sure that you're to the left of the front and the back, um, you know, surged edge, uh, just to the left of it. You do a back tack there. And then what happens when you wanna turn around that corner of, you know, of the pocket, you'll push all of those seam allowances towards the back so that then when you go to stitch around the curve of the pocket bag, um, you're not catching any of that seam allowance. That's gonna help this leg nice and flat there on that in that part. And then you continue to sew around the pocket bag. And then as you get to the end of the pocket bag, again, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna push all the seam allowances towards the body of the garment. Then you'll go there, you'll back tack, lift up your needle, pull your, you know, I even trim my thread and then push this stuff back. Um, again, back towards the pocket now, and you're going to start, and you see your notch is pretty high up there, actually. That's so that you, when you settle your hand into your pocket, obviously stuff's not going to fall out. Your hand kind of settles into it, as well as anything you put in there. So, um, again, this is pretty important that you're traveling to the left side of your surged, you know, of your original stitching um, of your same allowances. So you just don't want to see that, see that when you get it flipped right side out. So... And then at that point, it's pretty easy. You're just going to continue to kind of travel around 
you know, both of these long seams. I am taking some time here. Um, I think in the stitching of my pocket, my pattern got a little off. So for my original pinning, so I am taking some time to just make sure they're matching up. It was kind of stretching a little bit as I was sewing. Um, and so it was shifting around on me a little bit. So I just needed to slow down. So that's kind of what's happening here. So once you've got this first side finished, then you'll just flip it over and continue to do the same on the other side, on the other side seam. Once I've got those done, I like to go ahead and give a good, you know, press on this side seam while it's still open. You know, I haven't sewn my crotch yet, so I can actually get in there. Um, it just takes a little manipulating there. You can see the way the pocket is fit in there. And, um, and then, yeah, then I'm going to match up this big, long, you know, inside um, your inseam. And we're going to match it up, and then we're going to sew starting at the, the one bottom of the leg all the way to the crotch seam and again you definitely want to make sure you match up those seams align the seams right there and then continue down the other side of the inside leg down to your other ankle once you've got that all sewn up then you're again just going to take it over to the serger and clean finish all of that seam We're going to bounce back to the brown jumpsuit again for the sleeve edges here. Um, so this is a nice cuff that we add here so you have a really clean finish facing so that when you roll up your sleeve, um, it looks really nice. So I go ahead and I press one edge of that seam allowance down on both pieces of this. So that's the 3 8 inch seam allowance. Um, I just go ahead and press it and then we're going to stitch that together. That's where it's going to attach to the underarm seam of the jumpsuit. So once we've got that all sewn, then we can give this little seam a quick press. We don't have to clean finish any of this again because it's going to be hidden. So we'll just press that open and then I'll just kind of refold that edge and press it down while I'm here as well um, and do that for both of those. So our cuff here is going to go um, right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the fabric for the first stitch. And so we match up that underarm seam and then we match the shoulder notches. So um, I just kind of feel see me fiddle with this a little bit to get it in there. And then you're going to stitch completely around, you know, that circle on both of your sleeves. This is just to kind of show you what it's going to look like when you've done with your stitching. This, you know, is going to roll up from the interior of the garment and then fold really a nice finish on the outside there. And um, and then I will take it over and do a little press here. I'll just press all the seam allowance down towards the cuff and then just to give a quick press and maybe a pin or two to hold that in place as I'm sewing it. You know, you do see, again, this is one of those places where you see this top stitching, so you want it to be really nice and um, not pulling, not torquing the fabric at all, which can sometimes happen on something like this where it starts to pull. I also want to show you here, um, I used an industrial edge foot here for this edge stitching. And just so you get a little glimpse of what we use for production sewing, and it gets a really nice top stitch. You know, you can find these for home machines as well. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little quick view of some things that we use here at SoCo. You can see here that foot has an edge that sits over the side of your seam allowance there for your hem on your cuff. Um, you know, you do have to change these out with a screwdriver. So 
so as I sew, I am going to use that edge of that foot. Obviously, it's got an edge foot. Um, it's got a stiff edge. There's also spring-loaded feet like this. Um, lots of different types, but this is the one that I kind of like to use. It's just a stiff edge. You press that hem kind of up against that, um, and then it gives you this really, really nice top stitch. As you can see, that's an eighth of an inch one, but they come in all different sizes. So that's how we kind of clean finish that hem. You go all the way around on both on both sides. So then when you want to roll up that sleeve, um, it's really nice and you know you don't have any raw seam allowance there as you go to fold that up. And the next thing um, I will do on the sleeve is just to give it a little tack to hold everything up. Um, I always like to wear mine folded. You don't have to do the tack if you're ever going to wear it unfolded, but it just goes right there in that kind of seam allowance. going to work on all of our hems and per your pattern you're going to do one small turn um, I go ahead and just press all the way around and then um, then I come back and do my larger turn um, on my bottom hem so I think we have a total of one inch seam allowance which means it's a quarter small turn and then three quarters of the larger turn I use my ruler here a little bit and I just prep all of these, um, all the hems, so that when I sew with the machine, I can just do them all in one go. up with some brass snaps. You can get these snaps alongside a setter at most fabric stores. Um, definitely make sure you get the right setter that corresponds to the size and the style of snap that you're getting. And they're really easy to set. All you need is a mallet if you have one or a hammer. So these snaps come as a four piece kind of set. There's four different pieces here. That's obviously the top which is your button which you're going to see on the outside and it's back and you know there is I'll show you in just a second there's a right way and a wrong way to put this back on when you put it on and it kind of doesn't seem to settle um, that's the wrong way and this is the right way it'll kind of settle into those grooves you want to make sure you get it on the right way when you go to set these and then the back pieces it's that ring with the prongs and then it has this you know protrusion that hooks up into the top of your snap um, as you set those so I'm going to show you in just a second how to do these on the jumpsuit um, the first thing you want to do is just mark make sure you've got your buttons um, you know the button placement mark and you can do that from your pattern you could make them smaller you know um, closer together or farther apart if you want to as well I actually use the pattern of my garment as kind of a guide since I had that nice grid and um, and then I just marked it with a pencil and the first thing you do is you push down these prongs into your fabric and then you settle the back piece on top of that and then there it comes with a little anvil in the kit and you use the anvil so that you don't mar you know that uh, convex surface of your snap and then you put this back piece and you just hit it with a mallet or a hammer again if you have a hammer you can use that instead um, and then you're just gonna go down and do this to all of these you know I do like to do a practice one first so I didn't show that but if this is the first time you've ever set these kinds of snaps definitely do a practice one hopefully you have enough snaps in your set that you bought that you can do a practice one just to get the feel of it um, but that's what those look like and then this is kind of a little trick for for the bottom pieces of my snaps is that I just press down with my fingers on that fabric and you'll see um, when I pull up my fabric it leaves a little ring which is really nice um, because then you can just kind of mark the center of that ring with a pencil and use that as your guide. So now we're going to set the bottom part of the snap. So this is the part that has a little protruding, you know, that snaps up into the top part. Um, so again, I push through with those little prong teeth. You'll see here, you know, I kind of use what I got. I used a pencil to try to push those down a little bit. You know, you just have to work that a little bit. And then I use the top of the snap to kind of do the rest of the work for me. ASMR right now too.
so that's it. You know, you can make a belt if you want to. You can put some darts. Can't wait to see what you guys do with this cute little jumpsuit pattern. I showed them that with my fingers. About like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh, who's Bob? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can they go? Cause what we need is all so real, so real, so real. <laughs> oh, Bob. I should have Bob on there. And there would have, it would have been a little mystery. They, they would have immediately known the type of person I was, like the people that write things on their hands to remember them. Let me probably get some like conspiracy theory people. <laughs> No, do, do that. There was 24. Do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, fucker. <laughs> stress. I stress broke my clip. <laughs> They're not clovers, that's for sure. It's clover or nothing. It's clover brand. I got like 20 times more. But they're Japanese. <laughs> okay. I don't have. Ignore what I'm doing. No, no, don't. Ignore that. Don't ignore this.